We're going to begin our foray into qualitative dynamics by classifying the equilibria in linear continuous time dynamical systems. These are really cool. They come in several different types and there's a whole taxonomy associated to them. The beginning, middle, and end of our classification is eigenvalues. Everything is eigenvalues. Recall what we did back in 1D when we had a linear continuous time dynamical system of the form dx equals lambda x. Wow, why'd we use that lambda? Oh, right, because it's an eigenvalue for that one-dimensional system. There's a one-by-one one matrix with entry lambda, and it is, of course, the eigenvalue. And what did we have? We had that when lambda was negative, that's a stable equilibrium at the origin. And when lambda was positive, we had an unstable equilibrium. And of course, when lambda was zero, it was just degenerate, right? Okay, well now, in 2D, we have a pair of eigenvalues for our linear system, lambda one and lambda two. I wonder, are we gonna be able to use the same stable, unstable dichotomy? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. In fact, you've got a regular zoo going on. If you have a linear system, dx equals ax, eigenvalues, lambda one, lambda two, here's what the origin can look like. And here's the taxonomy or the naming of animals that goes along with it. First of all, we can have a source. This is what happens when lambda one and lambda two are both strictly positive. And what this feels like or looks like is you've got everything rushing out away from the origin, from the equilibrium there. Second is called a sink. This is kind of the reverse of a source where lambda one and lambda two are both negative. We have a pair of stable eigenvalues and that means everything is exponentially decaying to zero and what that looks like in terms of let's say a flow diagram is whoomp everything just goes into that center now it starts getting interesting when you mix stable and unstable if we have one stable one unstable eigenvalue that is called a saddle and that has some really interesting behavior where you've got things decaying exponentially along one eigendirection and then exponentially growing along another eigendirection. And in between, everything sort of gets sucked in and then ejected out one way or the other. That's a saddle. What happens when you have complex eigenvalues? Oh, this is something new. A spiral source is what happens when you have eigenvalues alpha plus or minus i beta, where alpha, the real part, is positive. Now what that means is that you're spiraling out away from that spiral source, from that origin. Beta is controlling the degree of rotation, that's the imaginary part. Alpha, the real part, is controlling the exponential expansion away from the origin. Well, if there's a spiral source, then I bet there's also a spiral sink. And indeed there is. This is what happens when you have a complex conjugate pair of eigenvalues with real part negative, with alpha less than zero. And then everything is still rotating, but it is exponentially decaying into the equilibrium at the origin. Now, something very interesting happens if this real part, alpha, vanishes, and you have a pure imaginary pair of eigenvalues. That is called a center. And what that has is that same sort of rotation where you're going round and round and round on circular orbits at some speed controlled by beta, but that's it. You just fill up the plane with circles about the center at the origin. Now that's not all. There are other things that can happen. I mean, what happens if you have one of your eigenvalues zero? That's called a degenerate equilibrium. And well, things can get a little bit complicated in that case. We'll have more to say about that later. But for now, there are two things we need to do. One, you need to memorize that list pretty quickly and internalize those descriptions. Two, we need to talk about how we actually figure this out, how we classify things. One approach is you compute the eigenvalues. That can be 
difficult or sometimes easy. Here's an example. Let's say we have the matrix A with entries 2, negative 11, 0, negative 9. This clearly gives you a saddle. What? How did I do that? How did I know that? Hmm. Ah, this is a triangular matrix, a lower triangular matrix. And cool fact, whenever you have a triangular matrix, the eigenvalues are along the diagonal. The diagonal entries are the eigenvalues. You can do a little exercise and check that. If you hadn't seen that in linear algebra class before, you're going to love working with triangular matrices. They're so great. I look at that, I say one of the eigenvalues, 2, is positive. The other, negative 9, is negative. Boom, that's it. That's a saddle. We're done. Ah, you say, but not every matrix is triangular, right? So let's write down a random matrix. A is negative 17, 5, 15, negative 29. Do you want to compute the eigenvalues for that? No. Do I want to compute the eigenvalues for that? No. But I know. I know. Just by looking at it, this is clearly a sink. Not a spiral sink, just a regular sink. How'd I do that? How'd I know that? Can I compute those eigenvalues in my head? Nope. I don't know what the eigenvalues of this matrix are, but I do know that it's a sink. And what we're going to do next is learn how you will be able to do the same inference.